Hi guys and welcome to today's video where I am going to be doing some maintenance on Lyra's tank and I thought you might want to see. I'm also going through some changes I've noticed. So there has been quite a few changes over the last year since planting this. At first if we look at this picture when it was first planted it looks very neat, very colourful, very green. Since then a lot of plants have gone in and out of this tank. One that has always remained is this anthrum. When I first put it in, in, it was actually underneath this branch, so you can see it's got a lot bigger. This year, so far, it's only produced two flowers, and they're near the end of their life, I think. Um, but it has recently produced a uh, a new stem, I guess, and that seems to be producing some colour on it, so hopefully we will have more flowers to come. We've also had a snake plant in here for a while, although this is growing very strange because it starts off very thin in the middle and suddenly gets wide and then it's getting too tall for the tank, so I may need to chop that down again because it keeps growing, but very strangely. Lyra is currently asleep in it. Um, I would highly recommend a snake plant for crested geckos, it really supports their weight and you'll find them asleep in it a lot. Another thing you, I will always find Lyra in lately is this planter. So originally it had vanilla orchid in, but when I changed from tap water to bottled water, the orchid just died. And uh, since then I've never really put anything in it, and over time Lyra has just dug in it, and now she sleeps in it. And I was actually watching a video about New Caledonian giant geckos, and they actually can be found inside tree trunks and stuff like that and that's why they really love cork bark in like in captivity and I thought well you know what if they can do it I'm sure a crested gecko can too and and at the end of the day you want a natural tank but you really also want to make sure there's lots of hiding places for your gecko so the planter can be hers she can live in that coconut she's a snake plant even the under growth growth underground I don't know what I am talking about it's very um uh what sort of like bushy I don't know like if she goes on the floor of this tank I probably can't see her but that's fine because you know it's her house and it can be overgrown but what we are doing today and what is important is we do need to chop some of this down this will help the plants themselves this will help me see what's going on down there because a lot of the ground still fairly dry. I spray this tank every day but the ground's a bit dry, the plants are dwindling a little bit, they just need some TLC. So that's what we're going to do now and also I have been, I well basically <laughs> I planted a golden pothos in here. I took a cutting from Isla's plant like at the end of last year and just put one stem in it and it has since just spread out and grown and then next to that there's something else coming through the ground and I think it's from the lucky bamboo I think it's an offshoot from the lucky bamboo because when I first got this if you see in the original plant haul video this only came out to about here and now it goes all the way to the top and it's too tall for the tank and I think now it's reached its maximum that it's now producing something else out the side. So there's a lot going on in this tank so now we just need to cut it down. <laughs> bare I guess but that's okay because basically what we want is we want the plants to be able to grow healthier plants on them and just have room to grow because it was just getting a bit too crowded. As you may have seen in the time lapse one that I had to move I not I like oh Lyra <laughs> Lyra up there because um obviously I was changing like her snake plant um and also the pothos so um that 
the roots in that thing are insane. That started off as one plant and it has like stretched to every inch of this tank and basically what happens is it will grow like a vine and that will set down roots and it will grow some vines off of that and that will set down roots so when you pick up the plant it's actually connected to so many different things and I had to take them out and as you probably saw so um I split some of those up and have popped them in various places around the tank the wandering dew that one is a bit of an annoying plant because it doesn't grow like that bushy or at least when I'm growing it it doesn't it just seems to be really, what's the word, just lanky, like stringy, it's just like, there's like a leaf, and then there's a massive gap, and a leaf, and then it just collapses, and even when I was trying to move some of these and replant them, they just, a few of them just snapped, I don't know if that's something to do with lack of water, but they just are a little bit annoying, they add in a nice pop of colour, but if you were going to get plants, wondering do, I would say get them as like a little accessory, but not a main plant, because they just, they just won't fill up the space as much as you'd want. But that is how her tank is looking and I have to give it a big water because the ground is quite dry and that is because it's been so overcrowded and also this is the reason why I always have dreams where Lyra has laid eggs and they've ended up being fertile and I go to her tank and there are babies crawling out the ground like that's a genuine like dream that I always have and it got to the point where I have chosen two names in case <laughs> she actually has pathogenic babies and that is Vo and Vega because I believe Vega is the largest star in the constellation of Lyra and Vo after the heart of Vo in New Caledonia and, and New Caledonia is obviously where they're from. If you ever want to get a name for one of your pets, I have a whole playlist on them. My favourite one is probably the Egyptian one because I actually talk about the whole story of like ancient Egypt. That was just one of mine that I actually really enjoyed researching. But anyway, um, so this is her tank and I'm just about to water it. What I need to do with all these like dead leaves and everything is just I can place them back in and as I have a clean up crew they actually break them down for me I can also give these to the other wood lice that you may have seen when I did the wood lice set up and then some of these like this bit of snake plant technically if I wanted to I could propagate it and eventually I have a new plant so you can do that with a lot of things I don't know if this has any form of seeds or anything on the end but I will just put that back in the tank in case it does anything um, but yeah, most things you can either just let your cleanup crew break down or you can propagate. I figured I would show you guys this before it all completely goes because this is obviously Isla's tank. And I've taken out the golden pothos, I've repotted that because I want to keep that. It was a healthy plant and it just reminds me of her and I would like to personally keep it. Um, this is a bromeliad, I think I'm going to give to my mum because it was a pup off of another bromeliad I gave her. So she can have that back um we got a bromeliad here that's got a little pup on it so hopefully i can use that pup in the future but with everything else i can't actually put it in lyra's tank because it could potentially have something harmful on it's a bit dodgy putting this in i may just keep that for myself in my room um but in general like i've obviously i've been digging this up a bit and doing all stuff but pretty much a whole, the whole thing has to be ripped out and sterilised and everything so I've been kind of putting off doing it because it just makes me sad but it's got to be done and her coconut is gone and basically what I did is I got like a little pendant made and I also attached a bit of the, her coconut shell to it and she's buried with a bit of a coconut shell I don't know if that sounds really just sad but I just like a little keepsake just reminds me of her because she used to always sleep in her coconut so yeah what a what a note to end on <laughs> but i hope you've enjoyed this video uh, maybe it's given you a few ideas of what is involved with looking after a natural tank to be honest the maintenance i probably only have to do every six months like it really depends on the growth rate of the plants but yeah so thanks for watching guys and goodbye <laughs>